you may like Visual Studio or Writer, or you might even prefer VS Code with a C-sharp dev kit. But knowing a few basic .NET command line commands can really elevate your .NET skills. Whether you're building an automation pipeline or just want to perform a quick action, these five commands are really easy to remember and easy to use. Now, for most of my training, I work to give an in-depth perspective on technology, but sometimes you need the quick answer to the question, how do I do this? That's why I created this 10-minute training series. So let's look at the five commands. And to do that, I've got a Blazor web app project just started. It's, it's just basically um, a file new project out of the box. I am using .NET 10. Um, so just note that that's the, the preview version of .NET 10. But we're going to work with this CS proj file um, in this directory, and we're going to use our five commands on it. To do that, let's bring up the terminal, and we're going to shuffle things around because there's gonna, we're going to have windows all over. So I'll just bring that up here and kind of shrink it down. But we're going to take a peek at what's in here in just a minute. But this is our terminal. And in here, what we're going to do is say uh, .NET. And if you don't have .NET installed or you don't have it on your path, this won't show up. But it should work on Windows, Mac, and Linux, just so you know. So info. And this should work on all the platforms. So in, this is a bonus tip, by the way. This is not part of the tips, but this will show you what you have installed. So for me, my version is 10.0.100-RC, the release candidate um, of .NET 10. Now, there's the Windows version I'm on. There is more information about what's installed. There's my architecture. And then here's the .NET SDKs I have installed, which is .NET 9 and .NET 10. Um, and that doesn't mean I can only build those projects. It just means they have the SDKs for those projects. So this might be a little different than yours, but as long as you can pull up this .NET command, .NET dash dash info, then you know you have the .NET command line installed. So with that, our first command is we're going to build this project. Now, if you're not familiar with the project and how it builds in the bin directory, um, you'll get these folders, release and debug, and with .NET 10, you have a .NET 10 folder, uh, which knows um, .NET 10 actually has a release. Let's get rid of that. Um, everything in the bin directory, you can delete. Like we can just delete the whole thing. That's fine. Um, go on, not a problem. Uh, because the bin directory gets built when you build the project. And let's kind of show that. So we're in the bin directory right now. I'm going to say the first command, .NET built. That's it. So no... Let's do this again. It's trying to give me um, a commit, you know, extra information. We're just going to do .NET build. So .NET build builds my project. Now, right now, it defaults to the uh, debug version, and then it creates my output. So create an output of, notice we yeah, have a debug folder in there, .NET 10. In there is the actual built out web application. So this is what, what Visual Studio does every time you say build. Now, we usually say run, which does a build first and then a run. But these are two separate commands on the command line. So that's the first command you should know, which is .NET build. That's what I have to do to build your application. That way you make sure it does build. But then you probably want to run it. So let's clear the screen here. See, let's clear the screen, by the way. Um, it now, maybe different on your terminal if you're on uh, Mac or Linux. I believe it clear would be the, the command probably for your terminal. So we're going to say .NET run. That's the second command. Again, no, no added things at the end, just .NET run. So running dot this will run the first web application. Notice it's actually running the one that has just HTTP. That's the first um, available one in the launch settings.json. But if we open that up, uh, control click, we can see that we have a working Blazor app that loads data, it has a counter, it has the home page, et cetera. So that's the second command, which is .NET run. Now, here is a bit of a problem. Let's say you go back over here to our, um, let's go to components and go to pages. And on the home page, I'm going to say open or edit in notepad. Now, I'm not going to use Visual Studio. I'm not going to use VS Code. I'm going to use Writer. This is notepad. And I could say, hello, um, let's say it's a world where I say YouTube. Okay, I'm going to hit save, and I'm going to come back over here. It still says hello world. 
If I hit refresh, nothing happens. What I have to do instead is I have to close this out. I have to close this out and then do a uh, .NET. Let's do, do .NET run again. I want to show you something. So .NET run again, I can open this up. Now it says, hello, YouTube, right? So that, that did work. So .NET run did get the new updates to our, our page, even though we didn't do a .NET build as well. Now, if I want to change it back and say, hello world, well, it's not going to change until I do a restart, right? Well, that's where the next command comes in. Let's close this out. And we're going to say .NET watch instead of run. We can say .NET watch. Now we've got hot reload enabled on the command line. Now it says, hello, YouTube, right? Come back over to notepad. Nothing special about notepad, right? It's just notepad. But I'm going to say, I'm not going to touch the browser. I'm going to say, hello, world again. I'm going to hit save, control S. Watch the browser. It now changed to hello, world. So just like in Visual Studio or VS Code or Writer, you can get the hot reload experience without needing to have any special IDE installed. You can just say .NET watch. So that's the next command to know about. So we have .NET build, we have .NET run, we have .NET watch. So let's control C here to stop this and we'll clear the terminal. Now let's, we can even close out of our, um, our page, you don't need to see anymore. Let's go back to our bin directory. Sometimes when you have something that's built, what happens with behind the scenes is when you build again, Visual Studio says what, or actually .NET, the command line, says what has changed and let's build those things. But if it hasn't changed, it doesn't necessarily do any updates, but that might cause a problem. You might have something weird going on. So one of the things you can do is another command called .NET clean. Now watch the directory behind me. Let's actually shrink this down a bit. Watch the directory back here. What happens when I say .NET clean? Okay, everything's gone. It cleared everything out. That way, the next time we do a, a .NET build or .NET run, what's going to happen is it's going to do a full rebuild. It's going to rebuild everything. There's nothing to to start from. There's no starting point of already done compiled things. So .NET clean, make sure that if there's anything wonky going on, that clears it out for the next time we do a build or run. Now we have now .NET build, we have .NET run, we have .NET clean, we have .NET watch. There's one more I want to cover. And that is, let's clear a screen here. CLS, uh, .NET publish. Now, I am not doing any command line arguments for these things. I'm just doing the bare commands. You can absolutely add more things to your command line, but just the straight up .NET publish, what's going to happen is it's going to build our project and notice it puts it in the release folder, which we have a release folder and .NET 10. We now have a publish folder and in there is our published web application. We could take that and put it into IIS or we could put it somewhere else. That is our published web application for our Blazor app. So .NET publish, again, one command will create your published assets for you. Again, all these commands work with uh, the console applications, WinForm applications, WPF applications, web application, it doesn't really matter. These commands work with all of them. So those are the five commands that I think you should know about. So we have .NET build, we have .NET run, we have .NET clean, we have .NET watch, and finally we have .NET publish. Just those five commands will get you 85% of what you need to know on the command line for quick actions. And again, you can use Notepad then to modify your files, not a problem. So. This allows you to very quickly get, in an app, get into a project, make the change you need to, see it on a screen, see it running without having to have a full IDE installed or without having to load up that full IDE. All right, so check those out, try them out. There's other ones to learn. There's more flags and others to learn on the ends of these if you want to dial in more specific things, but these are the five I think you should know. As always, thanks for watching. And I am Tim Corey.